Hi everyone, Digital Marketing Advisor Josh Cobb here and you're watching Digital Marketing Quick Tips, the show for real estate agents and business owners who want to know what works with digital marketing. In this two-part video series, we're walking you through how to use Facebook ads more effectively. And on the last video, we spoke about the differences between boosting posts and running Facebook ads. If you haven't watched that video, pause this right now and check that out before jumping into these next steps. In this video, we're going to walk you through the steps of creating a Facebook ad and how to target people more effectively with your marketing messages on their platform. After setting up our Facebook ad account in the previous video, we're now ready to create our ad. Remember, you can navigate directly to your Facebook ad account from your Facebook page or go to facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash manager and click on create ad from within your ads manager dashboard. The first step in any marketing campaign is choosing an objective. What do we want to achieve? And on this screen, Facebook gives us a number of options. And depending on what you're promoting, Facebook will automatically optimize your reach depending on what you choose on this screen. So choose wisely. If you've just opened a new office, you may like to choose the local awareness objective to increase awareness for your brand by reaching people who are more likely to be interested in it and either follow your page or contact you. If you have a video that you would like to promote, maybe a market update video, an agent profile, or a stunning video of one of your listings, you may choose the video views objective to drive more views. If you have an existing post on your Facebook page that you'd like to promote to drive more engagement, you might choose the engagement objective to keep the conversation going. Or our personal favorite, if you have a listing or a blog on your website that you would like to promote, you'll want to choose the traffic objective. In our consulting work with some of the country's leading real estate brands, we found more success with this approach from a business perspective than any other objective on Facebook ads. Simply because when someone leaves Facebook to consume information on your website, you have their full and undivided attention. This is extremely rare in today's digital environment. So I encourage you to try this objective yourself to see if you can do the same. Once you've selected an objective, give your campaign a name and click continue. In this video, we're going to use the example of a new listing and the objective of driving traffic to that listing on our website in order to generate inquiry from interested buyers. In this objective, we're going to leave our traffic source as website and continue onto our audience targeting. Here, we can choose to place our ads in front of people based on their location, their age, gender, language, or lifestyle interests, which includes other pages or topics they might be following on Facebook. These filters are also available when boosting a post. However, when creating a Facebook ad, you have the ability to create a custom audience and target people who have already interacted with your brand. In this example, with our listing, we're going to upload a list of email addresses of every buyer in our database who has shown interest in properties similar to the listing that we're promoting. By doing so, we're telling Facebook to match up Facebook profiles with the email addresses that we have so that our ads appear in front of only those people. How this works is when someone signs up for Facebook, they need an email address and a mobile number to verify their account. So if we have either of those two pieces of contact information, we can target our ads to people based on that information that they've provided to our business. You can either copy and paste your list of emails or mobile numbers into the box provided, or upload a CSV file containing the list of people who you would like to target with your ads. Give your audience a name, something like buyers from $900,000 to $1.2 million. This is so you can easily identify your list later if you choose to use that audience to target them again in the future. Another audience you might like to target is people who have already been to your website. This is called retargeting. You may have heard of it before. And it works by Facebook knowing that someone has been to your website and retargets them with your ads when they next log into Facebook. Before you can use this targeting, you will need to install a small piece of code on your website that will track your website visitors. You can either do this yourself by copying the code from within the same screen as creating your audience or you can email the instructions to your web developer to install it for you. 
Once installed, go ahead and create a new custom audience for your website traffic. Choose which pages that those people have visited on your website, either every page, specific pages, such as pages that relate to your listings, or pick a combination of both or a custom combination. How long ago were they on your website? Give your audience a name so you can identify it later and create your audience. Once you've created your custom audience for your website visitors, you can now apply all of the regular filters such as location, age, gender, or interests. Now it's time to choose where we want to display our ads within the Facebook network. If you leave this set to automatic, Facebook will show your ads to the people based on where your ad is likely to perform best. This might include someone's newsfeed, the right column within their profile, their Instagram feed, Facebook Messenger, or the audience network which displays your ads on approved third-party websites where your target audience are browsing and within certain games or apps on someone's mobile device. You may want to edit these placements depending on the type of ad that you're running. If you're using a video to promote your listing, for example, and the video runs for more than 60 seconds, you will need to turn off the Instagram placement because at the time of this video being created, you are unable to use videos longer than 60 seconds on Instagram. The next step before we start creating the ad itself is to assign a budget. A daily budget will spend up to that amount per day over the lifespan of your campaign. A lifetime budget does not apply a daily limit, rather a maximum you want to spend over the lifespan of your campaign. For our example in this video, we're going to apply a $250 lifetime budget for a 28 day campaign. As we start to play with our budget, you'll notice that Facebook is giving us an indication of how many people our ad is likely to reach each day. Increase your budget and you'll reach more of your audience each day. There was no right or wrong budget and you need to consider what is right for you, as well as your clients if you're running ads to promote your listings. You may wish to play around with these settings below your budget selection. However, leaving these alone will be fine. Once you're happy with your audience targeting, your ad placements and your budget, it's now time to move on to the creative side of building our Facebook ad. Firstly, you'll choose a format. And in our example here, we can use a carousel ad where our listing can be displayed with multiple images or videos inside a carousel. We can promote our listing using just one image. We can use a slideshow with 10 images in a looping video. Or we can create what Facebook calls a canvas ad, which is essentially a landing page with a mixture of videos, photos and or text. At the time of this video being recorded, we're finding the best results with video. If you're promoting your listings on Facebook and have a video for the property, you'll likely see more reach with video. This could change in the future as more and more people start using Facebook's video platform, but right now, agents who are using video are seeing much better results than image-based ads. If you do decide to use an image in your ad, try not to use any text, logos, or watermarks on the top of your images. Facebook's algorithm is trained to detect this sort of thing in the images that you're using in your ads, and it will likely decrease the reach if you put too much text on your images. Test it out for yourself, but our tip is to avoid using any text whatsoever or branding elements on top of your images. Next, you'll want to tell Facebook where you want people to go when they click on your ad. And a tip here, if you're promoting your listings, is to use the URL or the link from your website rather than the portals. If you're paying for ads on Facebook, take people to your website rather than someone else's. Next, add some text above your ad. Give it a snappy headline. Add a compelling description and choose a relevant call to action to display as a button on your ad. Before pushing your ad live, you may want to just check what it looks like on all devices to make sure it's going to look fantastic wherever it appears. You can do that in the preview window on the right hand side. Once you're happy with how your ad looks, it's time to publish your ad by pressing place order at the bottom of your screen. Once you've placed your order with Facebook, they will review your ad to ensure that it meets their terms and conditions. And if everything checks out, your ad will be up and running in as little as a few minutes. So there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide for building a Facebook ad, a little bit different to boosting posts. Many of our clients and agents who have been to our workshops 
are now using this approach as vendor paid social advertising to drive traffic to their listings on their own website. It's certainly something worth thinking about if it makes sense for your business to do the same. Feel free to bookmark this video or please share it with someone else if you found it helpful. And until next time, I'm Josh Cobb. Thanks for watching.